Hello everyone, welcome to a live in lockdown. And uh, it's been exactly one year since a live in universe at the Venice Biennale. We had 28 artists over 28 days. One of them was Sophie Molins. I'm Caroline Wiseman. I'm here in Albra at the Albra Beach Lookout on this very, very sunny day here. And I'm talking to Sophie, Sophie Molins, about her, the project she did in Venice exactly this time last year. So our brief to you, Sophie, was what does it feel like to be alive in the universe? Tell us how you responded to that. Hi, Caroline. Good morning. And <laughs> I'm speaking from beautiful, sunny Dorset. And uh, yes, I should have said, where, where are you? Tell us, are you in your studio? We can see, yeah. actually, we can see some interesting pictures behind you. I will just maybe describe them later. But I, um, I, I was so excited by Alive in the Universe. Um, I think as an artist, it's always lovely to have the confines of um, something to work towards uh, and Alive in the Universe coinciding with being in Venice and being in the Casanova Museum, the Palazzo, that also housed the Casanova Museum. Mm -hmm. um, it's always brilliant to see what, what, what that ignites and inspires. And I had made a piece of work probably 10 years before that, even longer, probably 15 years before that, where I'd thrown um, my wedding dress into um, a canal in Venice. And I'd done all sorts of rituals with my red wedding dress because mm -hmm. I think one of my practices is to um, do things with objects that have meaning and do some kind of ritual or ceremony with them. Right. Um, it's part artistic practice. It's part therapy. Is it some kind of part, sort of therapy? It's trying to um, turn something that's difficult or complex or sad into something creative. And I, I, when my mother may, died, I made an, a, a beautiful, well, I think it's a beautiful sort of memorial to her. It's a website called Deep Down Dark Horse with all her objects because I didn't know what to do with all these extraordinary yeah. things that I'd spent all my life with. Um, I might even nip and get you one. And I, I made art out of a lot of her objects before I threw them away. Yeah. So when yeah. I got divorced, I went to the Venice Biennale Mm. And I threw my wedding dress into a canal and I filmed it. Yeah. And um, the fabulous composer Michael Nyman used a clip of that film in one of his projections that he sometimes has when he's playing. He has projections. He used yeah. a small clip of it. Um, so when you were discussing Alive in the Universe in Venice, I thought, fantastic, the wedding dress. I threw my wedding dress. Yes. Yeah. It, um, and at the time when I did that, a, a girlfriend had said, oh, please do something with my wedding dress. And I said, don't worry, I'll send it into space. So it took for 10 years. I thought, how can I get it into space? And I would think about it and think about it. And I could never work out a way. Why and did you think about sending it into space? What was, it what was, was the throwaway away yeah. comment? It was... I had thrown a wedding dress from a divorce into a canal of the romantic city of the world. Yeah. Um, some, it's to do with um, the anti-gesture. You know, divorce is the opposite, in a way, of the romantic notion of marriage. So to go to the city of romance and chuck it was symbolic. And somehow launching, sort of throwing this dress into, her wedding dress into space, um, was a kind of, um joke really what do you do with this well, dress a dramatic gesture in a way yes. you, you might throw it into the canal but actually hey yeah. more dramatic throw it into space well little well, did anyone know that you would actually do this so as with you know art sometimes these things take longer than others and yeah you cogitate then, inside and you wait for the opportunity the opportunity well, came and so the second you said we're doing a piece in Venice in the Casanova Museum, you know, the Palazzo, the, I was just like, oh, brilliant, my wedding dress in the canal. And then I really wanted to make a new piece of work with this dress. And it coincided with 
with me finding a company called Sent Into Space. Mm-hmm. And, and they made it absolutely doable and possible. They were brilliant. Um, that was one of the, the most fun parts of it was working mm-hmm. with them. And also, um, I, I think you know this, but I've worked a lot with climate change and climate change charities. Mm-hmm. And this was so economical. Um, I was having all these ideas that were very complicated, but in fact, um, sorry, things are buzzing through. Mm-hmm. But in fact, um, it was just a weather balloon. It was so poetic. It was a weather balloon. Mm. Um, it needed a lot of um, planning, uh, relationship with air traffic control. It needed a lot of planning for the weather, for the cloud cover, for the et cetera. And oh. it just, it, it had two GoPro, Go, I mean, technology, I couldn't have done it 14 years ago. It had GoPro cameras, a GPS. Um, it went up to 27 kilometers, at which point there was a controlled explosion. Yeah. At 27 kilometers, you can see beautiful, beautiful cur- curvature of the earth. And then you didn't go up. Point, you didn't go up there, Sophie, did you? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> envious of the dress. This beautiful, this dress has been been there and back. Not me, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I'm obsessed by space, oh, yeah. and. Um, and once the explosion happened, a little parachute came out and it danced all the way back to Earth. And we needed it to come back to Earth because we needed to get the cameras off it. And um, right, yes. And I, you know, interestingly, I've got footage where it's very, very, it's ascending very beautifully with the background of the Earth or clouds. And then I've got footage of it dancing very yeah. well. We've seen it through film. It's it's going around back to Earth, and so. Um, I, I, I asked Michael Nyman, I said, look, you've used my film. <laughs> it's a bit of a big ask because he's much you know, more prolific and successful. And I said, can I use your music? And he was absolutely brilliant. People really warmed to the idea. And he said, fantastic, a wedding dress in space. It's my birthday. You can use things from my catalog. So mm-hmm. I was lucky enough also to have his music, I think, is just mm-hmm. such a gift. Mm-hmm. And Again, this idea of a romance in Venice, um, his music was um, very, very, can be incredibly evocative and emotional and romantic. So I, a lot of it sort of, it, it had a, this reedy kind of calling to the music. So- um, you, Sophie, is that you are a filmmaker and you make very beautiful films. So the end result of your film was not only was it sort of very emotionally searing, for you, but it was also very beautiful, the whole thing. And you used the two screens, of course, because that was one of the, um, one of the technical points. We, we, we said there's gonna be two screens there and to use both screens, and you did. You used them both in a very, um, a, a very adventurous way, in a very uh, um, creative well, way. I think, again, that's one of the lovely parameters that you set, because I think if I, if I hadn't have had two screens, I could have just shown my wedding dress drifting off down a canal. Yeah. Whereas having the two st- screens, I thought, right, I'm going to have this other dress. And so added the, hugely then to the creative. Yes, um, and I think yeah. I think the the old footage is just handheld Super 8, and it's a little kind of white blobby. There's a moment where the dress flies off the bridge, and then it's just kind of quietly with bird song drifting away mm-hmm. into the distance um whereas the 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 film of the wedding dress is 4k gopro amazing sc- musical score mm-hmm. i i put in a lot of static i mixed his music with a lot of static mm-hmm. which was um to stop it from being too beautifully poetic because it it is a it Sophie, you're... Bourgeois said, you know, artists are so lucky um, because they can they can sublimate their experiences into creativity. So, you know, it, I didn't want to totally lose the fact that it was um, it was it was um, it was a comment. The title, "Happy Endings, Happy Ever After," mm. um, there was a bit of irony in that. Um, mm. There, there there's also overtones of ascension because it's a little white dress going up and up and up you know when I was a little girl you you know there were 
looking at art there were people jesus ascending to god or angels ascending to heaven so there's this she she is a she is a headless arm yeah. handless yeah. she's very the, the dress i'm calling her she because she is very animated she yeah. does dance and and then um, did a performance sophie didn't you when we were there in venice on that day exactly that, a ago, okay. we there was tell us about the performance that um okay that happened well again again i think um that was fun again by chance i was telling someone about the dress and they said and and venice of course and they said oh do you know about william james he you know he had a very good friend that um she was called constance ferrimore Wilson, and she had committed suicide she jumped three stories from her venetian apartment and died and he was i think he felt a bit guilty as well because he'd not seen her for a while and she suffered from terrible depression and they were very close and she was a bit in love with him although he was homosexual so he wasn't in love with her i don't know they were very close mm -hmm. and he went back to venice after she died and um her family had taken everything and and left a, apart from her dresses and um again he did a ritual he did exactly what i was doing he 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 didn't he he grief is such a distressing and powerless emotion and you you feel such a rush for for the loss you want to kind of make some kind of expression of that feeling you want to mark it and so in those days in venice you had your own gondolieri a chauffeur <laughs> to take you around the canals nowadays you just sort of flag one down but you had she had her own very long-term gondolieri and and so um henry henry james uh, went out with him onto the lido with all her dresses and laid her dresses on the water mm. and and they wouldn't sink they thought they'd sink but they kept bobbing up and so it conjured a very poetic moment of these beautiful, beautiful Victorian dresses, you know, bobbing around on the Lido. So um, I had got the wedding dress back from space. So it was very, very difficult, health and safety. None of the gondolieri would do it. We asked and asked and asked. And actually, it was so lucky. We got one of the only, there's two women in, yeah. in Venice who do it. And she was one of the people, she was, the person that said yes and so at a prescribed performance hour <laughs> at your beautiful space um you know she came up it was lovely um, wasn't it? the way we were right on the canal there so we could yeah. have the two big screens and then open up the back doors and then you got the and, very cordia the canal and the, the way venice works when you're in these dark cool stone buildings and then you open the doors and it's a light and it's that color of the water and it's that bright bright sunlight sunlight and this beautiful you know gondolier comes up and a man lays laid the wedding dress finally to rest on the water and it just yeah. this white dress floated away on the yeah. the, the, the turquoise water and and it the, the reasons for him doing it and the reasons for me doing it were very different but i i just it was it was a story too good not to it was a it was a similar kind of um creative ritual and ceremony and yeah so it was, it was, I, it was fabulous so now here we are a year on we've yeah. got a new challenges now it seems like a whole new world tell me how what you how your work has um move forward during the year and and in particular now that we're in lockdown tell me what you're doing now and what you know are you are you because obviously that you know that thing about your wedding it was all about nostalgia about loss all those mm. sort of feelings and where is your work now where is your you've got a well this uh, new well, I want to, I might backtrack a little bit because when I was doing a residency for you at the the lookout, um, you mean I the very first one? The very first one. The first one uh, when you spent a week in the tower and you went, <laughs> you you were just there. You went feral, didn't you? That was the idea. You don't didn't even. <laughs> so you then offer this extraordinary opportunity of 
living in a tower for a week. No water, and I thought, no anything, no light. Uh, <laughs> but, and, and then you go with that. And when I was thinking about what to do there, one of the things I did was to lock myself in for a day and see what happened. It wasn't months and months and months, but I ended up doing these very, I really like them, these midlife self-portraits. Yeah, and then another of the day I said, okay, I'm going out and I'm not allowed to come back and see what I find. And I'm going to allow um, signs to lead me around Alborough. And I had the most extraordinary day and met the most extraordinary people and found the most extraordinary things. Mm. If you if you just say you can't come home, you know. And the reason I'm... I'm, 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 I'm just trying myself. I, it, it was. It, I, 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 I've been going to Alborough for a long time and I discovered whole new places. It was amazing. I think, again, it's about setting these, these, these parameters in, in order to see what you make and what comes yeah. up. And, and I think lockdown is a parameter and I think people are discussing a lot what mm. they're doing with that time. But also mm. what you did was give me the opportunity of a residency. And in January, I went on another residency in Finland called Silence, Stillness and Awareness. And it was a month mm. and we weren't to have mobiles and we weren't, we could go and get Wi-Fi for an hour a day. And we had no car and we were in the middle of nowhere in Finland. So I feel that I had this extraordinary lockdown in Finland and also it was quite cold and dark, mm -hmm. very little daylight. So I had this extraordinary lockdown in Finland and thought, and, it, and we had two days a week, which were complete silence. Ooh, Not, we weren't allowed to talk to each other. And so all this work came up which I then was so excited and felt I left there and I can't believe the irony. I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if everyone could have a month out of their life like this and just be and see what happens and yeah. do this work and bl blow me down. You know, it's not the same, but it, and, and, and I don't want to belittle because I'm not really talking about, you know, my daughter's a young doctor, so I'm not talking about the terror I have here. I, I went to a Zoom funeral yesterday. I, I've got, you know, I don't want to I don't want to diminish the seriousness economically mm. or, or what's happening to people's lives and go, oh, isn't this fantastic? Mm. Um, but at the same time, you know, we are all, a lot of people are having this space and a lot of people are using it creatively. and. Um, what have I been doing? I think I have been doing, I'm making another film. So I've been getting on with that. Um, it's about, it's called Lost Sheep. It's very esoteric, but it's about addiction. Um, Which is an area I'm, you work in, don't you? You work at a centre yes, yes, for that. Yes, I volunteer at a halfway house for people coming out of prison. So it's yeah. about attachment. It is about attachment and love and it does relate my other work because a lot of my work is about longing longing to belong longing or or grief yeah. so yeah. It, it, and they're always so so beautifully made your films i saw your one which was that very long journey yeah what was that very long journey i forgot where it was now yeah it was it was, it was about going to the st bernard's pass yeah. and down the other side but it was a story about it was a story about looking for the father yeah. it was a story about oh, walking yeah a memory and time and all the people that have passed over that place so beautifully shot that's the thing Thank about your you. work it's always so exquisitely made yeah so, um, so i've been going through my archive yeah um and i've been continuing i mean i was i was talking to people last night about the work that i've been making and it is slightly odd how the work that i made in finland and the work that i'm making now really does fit with what's going on now it's very um it's it it it, it the the work got influenced by dora ma there's a beautiful picture in that exhibition at the tate of a woman falling that she <laughs> took and i i i i fixated on that image because i'm very interested in mesmerized women mm. and mesmerism and Victorians and Victorian seances okay. because 
they came exactly at the same time as the rise of feminism. The first time, the f there was, I think they were like a few miles away, the first seance and the first feminist meeting in the States. They were literally at the same time, a few miles away. Okay. And, and it was a way in which, um, A, women who were quite restricted in Victorian times could become possessed and suddenly drink whiskey and flirt and sort of, you could you could channel these other parts of you that were repressed but also i think the whole of um, victorian spiritualism also came out of um this darwin had published the origin of the species and people were very um um realizing that stories in the bible related to stories in egypt and india and other places and they might just be stories and you know, if, if they were stories, where was God? What happened to people when they died? And they were really were thinking about these big, 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 big issues. issues. Mm -hmm. And they were very practical. So they were like, well, if people die, their spirit still goes somewhere. And I became very fascinated by, um, this is a great story. A lot of the, all the technology that we use today, a lot of it came out of um, spiritualism. So Marconi, um, was looking to make a, uh, a telephone so that he could hear people on the other side. And um, Sir William Crooks, who was head of the Royal Society, he, I think he invented something like the cold cathode ray. I'm, I'm getting my facts mixed, but which is the beginnings of television. Um, right. They use in television and Morse, Morse, long distance communication came out of tapping. And so these were terribly eminent and serious scientists going, we need to invent machines that can talk to our departed. And, right. and my, children are extraordinary. My, my children always say it's made up. And I go, no, this great science came out of trying to communicate with yeah. the dead. Well, of course, Victorians, everyone was moving to the city. So people were dying like flies because things were, became very contagious. A lot of people right. died, a lot of people were mourning. They were very obsessed by death. They yeah. lived in terrible uncertainty. Things, and so it? there was this kind of interesting, um, the, you know, Arthur Conan Doyle <laughs> booked the Albert Hall for after he died because he was gonna come back and talk to everyone and show them. You know, Victor after Hugo- he died, I see, his spirit was yeah. gonna come back. Or Whatever. Victor Hugo, all these incredible people. I mean, yeah. earlier Mary Shelley was very interested in. She yeah. was in the film on the mountains uh, on 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 ghosts. So yeah. I'm quite interested in ghosts, mesmerism, floating women, Great. and so I have been working a lot with this image of women being mesmerized at the moment, okay. and yeah. hypnotized and floating, which sort of ties in with the wedding yeah. dress. But it yeah. it also yeah it has a lot of uncertainty around it. It has a lot of sort of liminal um, strangeness. And I think this, I mean, the most common feeling I have is strange. Just, yeah, yeah. So you're really reacting to yes, this whole strange situation we're finding ourselves in. It's a lovely thing about being an artist, isn't it really? You can use all those inner feelings you have and express them through, through wonderful works of art which is what you yeah, do, Sophie. Yeah. So yeah. Sophie, Sophie, very quickly, can we just, so we're in your, are we in your studio? Well, where are we? We are in, your we're, in my, we're in my kitchen. We're yeah. in your kitchen and I can see all sorts of uh, interesting pictures what there. Like to, uh, mm -hmm. This is the thing I'm the proudest of. This is by Malik Sudibe, the Malian photographer. Okay. And um, I went to his, I went uh, working with Artist Project Earth to Mali to record the musicians for their environmental albums and we went to Malik's studio so I he literally gave this to me and then um, in the galleries in France it's a whole different story but yeah. the other amazing thing was I I had a two and a quarter camera which is a Roliflex which is what he used and I he was a very elderly man he's passed away now and I said could you take my photograph we were at his studio he usually has those incredible black and white backdrops and he said oh no none of my cameras are working and I went I've got a camera I've got film I'm I'll process it so um I got him to take my portrait in his studio well it's but a wonderful he... life it's a wonderful life the artist's life Sophie thank you so much that's Sophie Molins We've had a, it's been lovely talking to you in lockdown in Dorset this is and
Yes, yeah, I want to in lockdown. thank you, Caroline, for always <laughs> giving artists such extraordinary opportunities to be well, in the lookout. I, I love working with artists. It's so, it's, it's so exciting Jim for Dennis. me. Yeah. Well, we've got to think about new ideas. We've got lots yeah. of our new ideas coming along that we're thinking about. So thank you for being part of Alive in Lockdown, Sophie. And we wish you all the best. And goodbye, everybody. And I'm going to try and turn this, this off now. I'm going to go into recording there and turn it off so bye Sophie bye everyone <laughs>